Hey guys, it's Sarah here from New England Junk Journals, and I'm on because I want to show you guys something that I was inspired to attempt. <laughs> um, and I haven't even quite gotten to the attempt part yet. I've gotten to the prep part, which I think is probably the most exciting part because that's, you know, when you have all your hopes and dreams still intact and you think, yes, I can do this. <laughs> So let me start out by saying this is like 90% um, inspired by Rachel of Roxy Creations. Um, lately, since she got back from her trip to um, France, uh, they brought her and her daughter and um, her husband, have, they brought home like a bunch of fabrics, beautiful antique fabrics. And from those fabrics, um, Rachel wanted to recreate a, a, a lap blanket that her mother had made for Lily, her daughter. Um, but Lily would, wanted one that would fit her bed. The other one was like a lap blanket and she wanted something, um, larger that would go over as a, like a comforter. Um, and so, oh, it's, it's, she, so she showed the one that her, mother had made the lap blankets beautiful beautiful and then she's been going kind of uh, not quite step by step but she's been giving updates on her process um how the other one is coming out and it's again it's gorgeous and what she did um is she had um a tea towel base i think it's a fabric that was on a bolt on a roll and it was meant to be cut in pieces. There was like fringe in the middle and it was made to be turned into tea towels, I think, uh, or just some towels. So she was cutting those very regularly shaped pieces and she was going to um, do the, and she's doing cantha stitch. So I know my thoughts are all in a whirl. I'm trying to put them <laughs> in a way that's organized for you guys. So she's doing like a cantha, stitched quilt but that's pieced together um oh I hope this isn't too distracting to you guys this is just vitamin patches I put them on my hands because like I have all these veins right here so I figure that that's easier for the vitamins to get like right into those veins <laughs> um okay where are my thoughts so I went down the rabbit hole of YouTube videos and I watched all kinds of videos on cantha stitching, on um, Kawandi quilts, which is another project that I would absolutely love to try sometime as well. Um, and let's see, I'm going to try to link the videos that I watched so you guys can see the rabbit hole I went down. But uh, Jerry Bellini, that's her channel. Um, she did both a regular, uh, what she calls like a regular cantha quilt type style where you turn under your seams and you layer under and over. Or she might have done a Kawandi quilt. And then she did one where it was raw edges. Um, and that is kind of like what Rachel did. Rachel, hers are all like raw edges. And I love that kind of more rustic homespun look. So I think that's what I'm going to do with these. Um, and then I watched a video by Marion's World. Um, and I think she did um, a Kawandi quilt as well. And I um, can't remember. Uh, I think Kate did a, from the last homey house, she did a Cantha style quilt. She did, like, everybody does theirs differently. So hers, she did a base of double gauze. That's, like, the, the bottom fabric that you would see if you turn the quilt over. Oh, my gosh, it looks luxurious. I would love to try one of those sometime. Um, and then what she did was she pieced together, she layered a bunch of fabric in between from squares that she had gotten that were, like, less desirable for her. To, uh, according to her like they're they're not her style or anything she would use in her particular um color scheme and pattern and stuff 
So she had those as a middle uh, layer. And then what she did was she took her squares and she cut them into like five by a quarter, I think, squares. And then she stitched them as a quilt top, just, you know, just the blocks stitched together as a quilt top. And then she put that over the whole thing and then she did her canvas stitches. And that was beautiful. I mean, everybody's work has been so good. Um, but I think I'm gonna take a little bit from this, a little bit from that and decide what I'm going to do. So for now, <laughs> things may change, but for now I have these pieces of like beautiful flannel that I had um, a bunch of large remnants of it. And I cut them um, 20 by 25. And the reason for that is I picked out a very large lap quilt that I had downstairs that I loved. And I just got my measurements from that basically. It's a 50 by 62 inch um, lap quilt. So mine will be roughly the same and I'll tell you why roughly in just a minute. So I did manage to make, um, and I'm gonna try to patchwork it together like Rachel did, um, only because I feel like uh, when I want to do this project is in the evenings, the stitching part of it. Uh, when I'm watching TV with the family uh, and I can't imagine having a giant piece of quilt that it's gonna have to lay over everybody's lap as I'm stitching it uh, I wanted to have more manageable pieces um, so yes I've got I've cut four out so far and I have enough fabric to do the last two so they'll be two across and three high um, and then, okay, here's my conundrum. Let me move some of this away. I have this gorgeous lightweight fabric that I would love to put on the back. It has a flaw here that I'm going to try to hide with stitching. I mean, it's just going to be my quilt. I don't think it's so perfect that I can't let a tiny imperfection like this ruin it. <laughs> Not that that's the only imperfection. Um, I was actually thinking of first putting this material between my top material and this as the base, but seeing the color scheme that I have for the top, I feel like something like this would be much better on the bottom because then I don't have the, the stark difference in, like this isn't a cream, it's like a, a white white. Um, so I think this will look better. The only problem is it barely, barely makes the measurements. Um, but it's all kind of like it was a remnant that I got. It's all choppy and uneven. So I may have to take up to half an inch off of all the sides. And I may just have to be okay with that. <laughs> just end up with a slightly smaller quilt um, and then maybe not, I don't know, maybe trim all of these down by that much um, so that I, I am sure to have enough width, I don't know. And I still don't know exactly how I, I'll trim up this amount of fabric. I could lay it out on my kitchen table, but I don't think any of my, like this is the longest ruler that I have and it's 24 inches. So I don't know, I don't know, we'll see. This is all beginning, all new. So this fabric here are pieces that I pulled out to give me an idea of what I want. Um, these all came, they're all, scrap not scrap they're all fabric samples that have come from different places um, different fabric shops that I've gotten uh, that I've salvaged so there are a lot of them are like regularly sized whether they're small like this or super small like this and these all have to be pressed but I do want to trim off this plastic surging around. You know, a lot of these came with uh, the 
kind of plastic thread surged around the edges. So I'll trim that off, then I'll press them all before I start. Um, I have a lot of, I think, great colors that would go together. This one really needs to be pressed. Um, I'm gonna say like 90% of what I have is linen um, with the rest, the most of the rest of it being cotton. Um, and I don't think I have any other blends that I know of. There might be, I don't know, some synthetics in here, but I don't think much. But I'm loving these colors. I know the, the lighting in here is not super great, never is, but <clears throat> I've got these pieces. I'll double of this one. That's okay because I can spread it out. It's a wider piece there. And this, which I love, it is so soft. It's got like a washed finish. Pardon me. <coughs> Just need to clear my throat. Um and then I have I have thrown in here some like little checks and stuff that I might possibly use. None of these are like really vintage or they're definitely not antique or anything like that. They're all new fabric, but they have like a more antique design. Um, snip off some of these threads. But I'm thinking of like creams, grays, pink, and then like this blue green color. Some like celery or like celandin colored green. That's actually a small swatch of this exact same thing. I didn't realize that this was. Oh, it's in a slightly different colorway, but yeah. There's some more of that with some, you know, some browns, some light browns. I don't know if I'll use this because it's not super similar, but maybe if I use it in small amounts, I can get away with it. I did have some um, embroideries that I think I'll use. I think that'll be really nice. Again, some of that check. This is like a ticking. This is a darker blue. This is just a kind of a taupe color. And then I've got those trees in a green. It's got those great muted colors with the pink and the green and the blue. This I thought might be fun to throw in and even keep this little patch. Some more ticking that I just had in my stash. And then this gray. So if this is not enough, I do have more. <laughs> but all this stuff has not been washed or processed or anything like that. I And I don't know how I'm going to do it because I didn't like how the other ones came out, especially when they were strips like this. It was like a canvassy um, thickness. Uh, but it has all this great scripty stuff. And this is about as close as I'm going to get to that <laughs> in my collection. Um, Rachel did have some beautiful um, fabric that she had printed out, I believe, from her digitals. She printed on fabric. So this is about as close as I'm going to get to that. And I don't know, you guys, if you guys 
have a lot of experience with this, let me know. Do I have to wash this stuff? I know that sounds like it's such a rookie question. Um, and I'll do it if I have to. I did it with the other stuff and I'm just going to press them out. But if I don't have to, that would be even better. Here's just a cotton that has a nice toile um, pattern on it. So I thought that might be nice. I have a few pieces of that scattered through. And then these just came straight out of the, um, the book. They haven't been processed at all yet, but I thought they were really nice. It's got this lovely embroidery. Here's some like red and taupe colored, like a little darker than taupe. Um, ticking. I think this might be a little too light for it. But I really liked this one because you've got the blues and greens and pinks all together. Um, I will use it sparingly because I don't really, oh well, this is not too yellow. I didn't really want to introduce yellow into it only because I already have these colors going. A small patch of this would be cute to break things up. I don't want to have just all florals, even though I mostly, mostly do have <laughs> florals. This I thought would be really good too. Beautiful. More tick. I just have like random pieces of this blue ticking like everywhere in my stash. This is like a more modern print, but we'll see. Maybe it will, maybe if I use just a small piece of it, it'll work. This is very interesting. I don't know. Again, I thought just for some randomness, different texture and pattern. I have a piece of this probably came off of a um, pillowcase, I bet. I'm not sure if I'll include that. I, it's just in the pile. Again, this might be too modern looking. It's just flannel. It's a really pretty piece of flannel that somebody either started cutting to make a shirt or cut from a shirt. love this. I don't know how, that the colors are going to go, but I just added it just in case. This is lovely. I don't know if you can see the pattern on there, but it's got, uh, and this might be too heavy to put in. I don't know. We'll see as I get going. Some more stripes. I like the model look of this. This is cotton. I thought a few pieces of this might look really nice. Then a coordinating stripe. This also kind of coordinates. This doesn't, I don't know how this ended up in here. But and then again, I have enough of these like um, it's called mist, but uh, there's a name for this style. It's Jacobian maybe, kind of. It almost looks like a mixture of like Jacobian and like an Indian style fabric. This is a very light um linen and viscous. Now, again, if anybody knows, is viscous um, synthetic or natural? Like, will this like get all crazy if I wash it or include it? And then another piece is just a little bit more bright maybe. 
So yeah, I have quite a bit here. This isn't even a this isn't even a drop in the bucket of the fabric samples that I have. Um, but I think it'll be really, really fun to have this project to do something with. I would, if this comes out really well, I would love to try my hand at doing like the Kawandi style one, um, or another one, and then just literally pick a, a collection of fabrics and just do it all in that collection. That would be really fun. Um, let me know guys, if you have any tips, tricks, ideas, um, Tell me to get out before I'm over my head. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I'm really excited though. It's like, I don't know. So I almost named this channel the ADD Crafter because that that's how I do everything in life. I have ADD and I jump from project to project to project. Um, I literally just got this back out to... Um, I, I, had half completed it and I really want to complete it. I've been working in it, building it up and it's getting close to being ready. I still have to make the dangle for the closure. Um, and then this idea, I saw it and I said, yeah, I gotta do that. So this I think will be my evening project. This will be my daytime project and hopefully I can bounce back and forth and everything will be just dandy. Um, I won't get bored with either one of them, hopefully, because I will be alternating. I also have a couple other journals that I need to, um, finish to, they're just kind of half finished. I have my, um, it's a ring bound journal that I made out of Monopoly theme board. Uh, it's like a Monopoly slash travel theme and that needs to get finished up, so... I've been making huge leaps and bounds as far as organizing and emptying boxes. And I think like, because I've done that, like my inspiration is just like so much more heightened now that I can see what I have and I know where it is. So anyway, thank you for letting me drone on and on for over 20 minutes about this project that I haven't even started yet. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, leave, leave some, leave some comments. I want to, I want to chat with you guys. Um, let me know what you think. If anybody's attempted this before, um, I've been really intimidated by, um, Rachel, Rachel from Roxy Creations, her, her work, because she just does such beautiful work. And I've wanted to like jump in and try one. And of course, the one that I would try is the one where I have no expertise at all, but we'll see how that goes. All right, guys, that's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much. God bless and goodbye.